rate is much higher than their blue side. They're eight and two on red compared to seven and five on blue. And a lot of that comes down to, you look at RA's most played champions, it's the Renekton in top lane. It's the Volley Baron jungle. It's yeah. the LeBlanc in mid. It's Kai'Sa and Varus in AD. You look at all these champions and like the one common denominator is they're all either champions that are typically counterpicked or they're all very strong blind pick laners like that Varus or like that Renekton. Yeah, exactly. We're already seeing some of those crucial picks come off the board. FPX ban away Luyen's Volley Bear. The Nocturne comes off. The Gwen for Rare Adam as well. And the Callista banned away by FPX. Little bit of focus down towards the bot lane matchup. And one thing I'm curious about, right, is the Viego. The Viego is something that we've seen both of these teams perform quite well on. Both Viego and Lee Sin left open. And man, right now, it, it just feels so hard, especially with Doonby's champion pool. It feels like Doonby has four standout picks. The Akali, the Lee Sin, the Viego, and the Kled being his other big one. And now you're going to have a bunch of things left open. It's going to be traded on both sides. I'll be honest, yeah. I'm not quite sure what to expect to see Ari going for with so many different champions left open. The Lee Sin is the big one to me that at least this champion is is more of a flex pick than something like the Viego, which I feel like we do typically just tend to see go yeah. more towards that mid lane. Yeah, and I think the Lee Sin is a pretty safe pick right now. It just provides a lot of that flexibility. You can move it around, but as well as just a lot of the upside of having a Lee Sin in the game, having the setup, having the damage and everything that comes along with it. Viego is the almost instant lock-in for FPX as well. So very high prominence on this pick today. Hasn't had the best showing, at least in the first series, but this is a different beast. This is FPX whipping out the Viego. Yeah, and you know, now typically you go two ways. Either the Diana would come out, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if FPX do just lock in the Varus, and they do for the fact that we set up, hey, for RA, they've had pretty small champion pools, and they've consistently just gone towards these things that are self-sufficient in lane. So, you've already taken away the Kalista. Sure, the Kai's is still open, but that's something that I feel like has really struggled in the current meta, and it doesn't even do well against the Varus. So, take away the Varus, make it hard for their bottom lane to do well, because their bottom lane is probably the one area that that really does just uh, outdo your roster on the Rift, especially when you don't have a ton of experience coming in with the fact that you're bringing in a sub that you don't have that much practice time with. So good takeaway. RA straight away gonna pick up the LeBlanc. In my mind, this is Fofo's most notable champion mm -hmm. in his career. Back when he started out in uh, season 16, uh, season six, 2016 in the LMS. Season LeBlanc 16. was his big... Yes, yeah, season 16. <laughs> oh Thank God. you, Mazzel. We're going to the future. And then we're going to have the Camille coming out as well. So already setting up a really strong pick comp for the side of RA. Already having a bit of a 1-3-1 that you can always default back into. And still getting these champions that provide a lot of playmaking and agency. I, I'm just I know you just made a lot of really great analytical points. I'm just gonna say that I gotta get me one of those posters with doing be making that that those ears and the hat on. I mean I have to get one of those. Anyways, we're back to it. Cause rare Adam, as you were kind of talking oh. about, getting a lot of the forward momentum with the Camille backing up the LeBlanc and the Lee Sin lock in the Renekton sneaks on through and is the final pick in the first phase for FPX. Yeah, I just realized that this got so far through draft and you know, this has been a pick that we've seen more and more teams ignore before it had 100% presence. Now we're only at about 80%, still incredibly high, but these are two teams you would think would gravitate towards it more than anyone else. For FPX, you know, uh, Doonby being a massive Renekton player, Nuggery as well, so being one of the best teams to look for that flex pick. And mm -hmm. for Rare Adam, it is Cube's most played, Fofo's played it as well. I feel like it's just typically been one of Cube's more prominent champions, but making it all the way this far in draft, we're going to see coming out on FPX. FPX now, I think, really looking for an AP jungler. We still haven't seen the Diana band out, so that's something I would like to see RA take away on the last pick. But even then, sure, Rumble's nerfed, but it's still open. It's still yeah. Tien's most played champion and something that he can pull out easily. And we got to see some performance, at least some decent performance out of Shadow earlier in, this, in the first series on that pick as well. Just got to pick the right fights, got to pick the corridors that work out well as FPX banning away those supports, those engagers, those CCers, and the Leona and the Alistair taken away. Rare Adam on the other side did ban away the Silas for a lot of that versatility that maybe FPX is looking for. And as this last ban, it is going to be the Diana. Yeah, overall makes sense. So they are taking away the expected pick. 
the Nidalee also being something that is available. N never really something that Tien has been known for, only playing it a couple of times in his career. So, 4 FPX, I feel like the most, the jungler that makes the most sense would be something like the Rumble, but instead, going to bring out the Galio. So actually what they're gonna do is just put the Viego in the jungle. It yeah. has been something Tien has played. It's not something we really talked about or even considered uh, at all, just for, I think the fact of how good Duinby's performance has been on the Viegos is kind of why I gravitated towards them just putting him on it outright. But Tien gonna be on the Viego. He actually did play it in their last series up against LGD. I believe it was in game one where they had the Orianna in mid lane. You have your mid laner now to facilitate that in the Galio. And now we're just gonna be looking at what support pick Shunny wants to go for last. As for RA, we get the Nautilus coming out. I feel like you just want something that can safely catch waves in mid with all these AD carry bands. There aren't too many options left on the table. Aphelios being incredibly strong on this mm -hmm. patch ever since the buffs did come through. And that is what I was going to decide on. And a good amount of range to go with the uh, rest of the composition that's unfortunately gonna leave Aphelios hanging a little bit I feel like when you're got so many buttons to go forward but you know you have a decent amount of range to back it up as well so that team fight's gonna look really interesting a lot of execution needed on the side of rare Adam with what they've been able to pick up for themselves but Rakan is the final lock-in for FPX as they get a little bit of engage and a little bit of support as their final one and I actually like FPX's composition. I feel like it's easy to look at and think, you know, maybe there isn't too much damage on it as it goes later. There's there's really not too much AP, but at the same time, RA's comp doesn't really have a tank, so I don't think that's a massive yeah. deal either. And the thing I like about it is you have a lot of champions who are going to be coming into close range. You have a lot of champions where that, that Galio taunt's going to do a lot of work, where the Rakan W is going to knock multiple people up. You're going to set up for a very easy to quickness, and it should just give room for both TN and LWX to do massive work to where even the Dominus on the Renekton feels like you're just going to get a lot of value. For RA, I feel like you're going to be relying a lot on iBoy and Fofo to play near perfect on these picks to be able to find the advantages and especially come out ahead in team fights, right? You have the range on your Aphelios, so you can really ignore a lot of the engage coming out for the side of FPX, but especially Fofo on this, on this LeBlanc is going to yeah. do a good job of abusing a uh, lack of vision finding flanks being able to get on top of the key carry like the Varus, and taking him out of the fight early on or even just not even killing mm -hmm. him right just chunking him low enough to where he doesn't feel safe to walk forward and output damage and i think it's really interesting because we set up this mid lane matchup right the gun show that is this this crazy matchup between fofo and and Doombi. but the fact of the matter is we have a leblanc on one side where you're looking at a lot of execution you want to get out on the map you want to get involved early on you want to snowball very heavily and on the other side you have a galio looking more so to play with the team get to that level six mark heroic entrance get involved in the team macro decisions a very interesting setup from both these teams as we do hit the rift for the first time of this second series it's been a heck of a night and we're going to keep rolling on through Rare Adam versus FPX. Game number one starts now. Still got to get me some of those signs, Lyric, because we do get to see a little bit of the crowd move on through. A little bit of a change up of scenery, but still the bright and smiling faces that we all love to see as we do get the early game with no shenanigans and the League of Conquer is down a little bit here today, Derek. Yeah, I mean, which is the fact that we have things like the Galio and the Blanc coming out. Of course, not gonna see as much of it. And I love that we're already kind of looking at the melee matchup because this matchup, despite the fact that Galio does kind of nullify LeBlanc in a sense, right? She jumps in, you're able to taunt her, uh, hit her with your passive and throw out the Winds of War as well and kind of back up from the trade. I still feel like this is a decently LeBlanc favored matchup in the laning phase. You look for the all in, sure you're taunted, but you're able to throw out that Ethereal Chain. You're able to proc your, your Aftershock and then just abuse your range advantage coming in. And hopefully we're gonna see Fofo be able to force Junbi out of lane early on and really make the most of this matchup and then start roaming around to influence the map before Galio has a heroic entrance to be able to help out his team. 
That's uh, how, how the game plan is supposed to work out. <laughs> At least for Fofo. Just trying to get some influence there, maybe by Lu Yen. And just trying to find those synergies along those lines. But that's where I find it a little interesting here when we're looking further into the game. When you're looking at those team fights, when we're looking at things that we set up for both these teams, right? Rare Adam trying to take the more calculated approach, the incremental gains, getting to the later parts of the game and finding those executions that way. And FPX a little bit more of the just find wins where you can if you've got to win, snowball it forward. But this time around, different and more calculated approaches, uh, at least for FPX. And on the other side, execution heavy focus from Rare Adam. As uh, Nuggery actually taking the better end of a trade against Cube in the top lane. Slice and Dice going to get Cube very low, but nice response from Cube as well. We get the jungle attention. Tien finds Luyan, but not going to get the kill. He will look. I thought he was maybe going to go for the Scuttle Crab. Actually decides not to. It will eventually pass. Look at Fofo back. on the mini map. Yeah, it's close. Yep, Fofo making his way over. This is what we wanted to see from Fofo is, is helping his jungler get attention and, and find pressure on the map. But now the rest of FPX are responding, except Doinby is going to back, complete that one, get the TP back in. And Tian is the one that picks up the Scuttle Crab in the end. Bot lane, a uh, little bit of an engage there from Shuni, but if he stays, he might die. As I boy getting very low to be able to pick up that first blood, not gonna find it just yet. But summoners burn. Yeah, and overall this trade's actually gonna mean a lot, right? Because we have Duin be TPing in the mid, which is supposed to be able to help give them prio to take this crab. He's coming back on the map with the resource advantage, with a bit of an item advantage in that dark seal. But your, your bottom lane having to blow summoners, giving over pressure to Eyeboy and Hung, meaning they're able to follow first, evens out to Lo Yen getting that scuttle crab. Was well, nice to see Fofo and Lo Yen linking up. We, we hit on how this is one of the areas where the team has really improved since spring split. They do link up more still. Uh, I feel like Lo Yen being a bit greedy in terms of that, that, that first clear of Fofo doing his best to prevent that scuttle from coming out. Lo Yen just be like, no, I need to finish my drop first. We can do it. <laughs> Goes for it. Sadly, Tien able to smite that one away. I don't think that one was a big deal. And it's nice that RA were able to translate their bot pressure into securing that scuttle crap for him. So you're, you're pretty much even across the board. And hitting on RA's bottom lane specifically right. Very strong laning duo. Maybe not overall, I think, in terms of like maybe team fights in mid game where they really shine. But I definitely think Hung and Iboy have been one of the, the better and. and especially more lane dominant bot lanes in the LPL. And I think going up against, you know, LWX with a newly implemented Shuni, I, I, that's one of the moments that you can really shine as this duo here where we've seen that growth from iBoy and from Hung on this duo. And I, I want to see that kind of shine through in this game specifically because I do feel like they're set up for success. We've already seen the aggression early on. We've also wanted to see a little bit more of that synergy develop. And I feel like once iBoy and Hung are able to get into those fights with the rest of the composition, with the setup that Lu Yen is going to be able to have for them, that's where this, this kind of duo is, is really finding their stride. And something we can keep around as well is if Lu Yen is just going to keep looking for opportunities around top, because right now he's about to do his scrump, potentially set up for a gank on top side, but with the vision that has come down, I don't really think he will be able to find anything. Or if he'll go to typical Lu Yen style of just defaulting around where your strong lanes are, play more around bot, help them get push around that 730 mark and try to translate that into an eight minute herald. Despite the fact, Dominus comes out from Nuggery. Looks like we're getting some fighting, Mazel. Oh, Mizzel. we are. Tien takes a nice little fight on Lu Yan, but Lu Yan able to get out with a nice little dodge to the ward. And we had the Dominus, we had the fireworks, but uh, just a little bit of lackluster in the execution there. Not going to get the first blood that we could hope for. And we're already circled at seven minute mark. Yo, both these teams hungry for it. Bot lane might be the first sight of it as Shun Yi has to get out. Does have the ignite burned onto him by Hong. But still nothing else comes of it. Level six acquired by Doon B. They also have the TPs coming in. Nuggery is here. The heroic entrance comes in. Hong is already down. And first blood to FPX. 
Yeah, so gonna make that proactive play. We saw Ping coming out on the ward to look for the engage. They didn't go into iBoy because iBoy had the cleanse up, so they knew if any sun come out, he can just instantly look for the flash. Isn't gonna get knocked up by the, the knockup from Galio either. So they go for the confirmed kill. This is gonna get a bit of give a bit of leeway to the Camille as we see Lil Yen just sneaking in here. LWX does have flash though. Oh, Dragon Rage kick available. LWX gets under tower. No, he is taken out. Oh no, the return kill. LWX and unfortunate for Lil Yen. Yeah, I mean, the Chains of Corruption came out at the last second, right? Didn't even really see the animation coming out from that one, but getting locked down under turret, guaranteeing that kill. And it goes back to the point that LWX having Flash, he even still had heal as well, didn't have to use that one, able to find a kill in response. As both supports going to be on the top side of the map, Herald did just come up. It's going to be about trying to help your mid laner get mid prio, turn into river first. But look at the state of the map right now. You have Doonby pushing in mid, Nuggery has pushed in topside, they're going to be able to take control of River, and I don't think RA should be in a position where they can answer. LWX doesn't have Flash, and both Doonby and LWX don't have ultimate, so if RA decided to go for it, that could have been, you know, the, the way you, you look to punish, but RA keeping it stock and standard, not wanting to go for the risk. Yeah, the, uh, exactly how we, we set it up for them, right? They didn't want to go for those crazy plays anymore. Chaos is not their name anymore. All right, Lyric, gosh. Uh, but no, Rare Adam just finding those little bits where, yes, maybe they can give up some things in the early game just to ensure that late game potential that they do have. Yeah, definitely. Uh, RA not being the Professor Chaos of the... You know, LPL, South Park, crossover universe, but... <laughs> this is the know, universe I want to live know, in, just saying. <laughs> dude, I'm just saying, Professor Chaos, in general, disarray, the coolest characters in the show. But, uh, you know, I, I, don't feel like, I don't feel like this is the time or the game for that tangent. You know, we can save that for, like, RW versus TT or something like that. But wow, why do you gotta right do them like that, man? Why you gotta do them like that? All <laughs> They're right. already dead. All They're right, already all right. dead, but no, no point is you know Lo Yen gonna pick up this early dragon we do have rift herald on tn though and i feel like a big question is where they're gonna end up opting into using that one you've already taken one plate in the top side of the map and i feel like nuggery's already made his way onto the second one as well so that could be an option opening up a side lane preventing the camille from getting even further ahead to where you see your bottom lanes getting heavily pushed in your mid lanes getting heavily pushed in Sure, Tien can look for an opportunity to make this play on bot. Duenby's about to have TP up as well. And if you can find kills, you can look for that Herald play. But I feel like that is dependent on the, the bottom lane of RA making an overstep. Yeah, I, and this is where I wonder if that's going to be sniffed out, right? Tien just going for the clear right now. But there is that possibility. I do also want to highlight that Lu Yen is down here on the bot side as well. So there is that response available with the Lee Sin and the mobility that you get with that pick. But it looks like we're going to get a little bit different moments right now from either jungler as the reset did come out from Lien, but Tien is just going to continue to farm up through here. Maybe look for something after clearing his blue side. Yeah, maybe look for something after that, but Tien's actually going to be the one who has tempo towards the top side of the map, and we hit on how Right, the, I think the most logical conclusion of where you're looking to drop that Rift Herald is probably the top side of the map. RA though have like pretty good defensive vision down in their top side jungle, right? They have they have two control wards. Lilian making his way here now. So RA know that for them their plan is just try and spot out where Tien is on the map and prevent his plays from coming through. You don't even have to necessarily like, yeah. like answer kill for kill. If you can just show up where he's going to be, when he's going to be there, just stop a Rift Herald or stop a gank. You don't necessarily need to turn into a kill yourself. You have the Aphelios that you're banking on. You have the Camille that you're banking on to step up for you later on. And to where earlier in the day we saw LGD not able to do this effectively, it feels like RA or a team where this is in their DNA. Yeah, this is where they, they feel the most comfortable at. This is where the, the, the moments actually feel like they are in their side of the court. I will say, it's a very different pace, though, <laughs> from series to series here, Lyric, because we were getting just so much fighting. It was action every 30 seconds or less in the first series of the day, but this one is calm, cool, and collected to a T here at 12 minutes in. 
They have not gotten that much blood. Just two to one in favor of FPX. A slight advantage for rare item just across the board because of some CS differentials, but nothing really crazy, nothing to write home about so far. But it's one of those games where you feel like things can kick up at any moment and that snowball will be real. And I think this is going to open the question of actually going to stop because we have Rift Herald coming out in the mid lane. Not going to really be able to do any massive amount of damage. Just going to get some gold on to Doin B. But Hung missing a hook. I, I, I'm going to stop with the, the the point I was going to make right now, Mazel, because we have both teams posturing like they want to fight. I think for FPX, we know they always want to fight. But <laughs> I was going to oh, say. Chains of Corruption. When does that ever stop? Nothing. Yep, definitely not anytime soon. Chains of Corruption came out, not able to find the pick. But, you know, thinking about it, the biggest question mark to me is, sure, we've seen FPX play games like this. Dredge line, though, he's a Rakan, so oh. I don't think too much should be able to happen. Moonlight Vigil used on top of it as well. You see the CC chain, the potential there for Rare Adam, but... Shuni just able to get out with the nice little moves. And as a Rakan, feels good. Yeah, very hard to lock him down with those uh, all-in champions and really find the, the time to burst him out before he's able to get away. But we've seen FPX have some slower early games like this where they're not really able to find too much to get ahead. But typically, Doon B is on Yikes. something that can just take over a game, right? This time around, Doon B on the Galio isn't on something where if RA are able to get into a point of power that I just don't know which member of FPX I look at at and really have the confidence yeah. in to be able to get the game back in their favor yeah and i feel like you know you're putting a lot of eggs into the full team composition basket the heroic entrance to kind of turn the tide of a fight talking about turning tides of fights we got fpx looking for a fight on bot lane not gonna have the back of a vel wx just yet it's still just a 2v2 down here until the late wave is pushed up the rest of RA are not going to be coming down here to support just yet. You're now seeing Lien coming down this way. You already do have three members strong of FPX down here. Yeah, and right now they're doing a good job of controlling vision through the bottom half of the map. Even though we've seen them lose out in 2v2 trades, right? We've seen them in the past two exchanges actually have push in bot lane. So they're trying to get Pryo to walk into river through where they're strong. They're going to get vision control through that bottom half because they know they can't realistically went out through the mid jungle 2v2 right now so Lu Yen gonna try to get pressure oh, through their flash oh do it be dead Lu Yen gets the kill hung ain't some trouble bot lane i boy trying to turn a miracle but can't make it out of the dust hung goes down and that's a big trade on opposite sides pretty much here and we're still gonna keep the action going as Lu Yen is trying to steal away the red buff from nuggery that's the thing, right, is we saw both teams turn to where they were strong. I think RA initially had a really good response to what FPX were doing, to where it's like, okay, Tian coming through bottom side, securing vision through there, but RA looked like they wanted to set up a dive for top side, but Nuggery with the Dominus ain't gonna be anywhere close to going down. And team just gonna continuously opt into trades for objectives. Tian picking up the dragon, but Lo Yen wanting to do the Herald. You have a lot of FPX coming towards the top side of the map, though, so... I just have a gut feeling that FPX are going to contest. I feel it too. Rift Herald's about 3,000, now about 1,500. Just going to go down here to Lu Yen. As Tian and Duen B are here. Let's see if they opt into the fight. The taunt comes down. Lu Yen is going to go down as Nuggery goes over the wall, gets the kill. All the Rogue Injuries to back it up as well. And they are going to find a second. Duen B gets the one himself. And the love has been shared across the board pretty much for FPX. And that was just a nice uh, counterplay coming out from FPX. RA trying to cheat tempo a little bit, right? They have Lu Yen soloing the Herald while Cube and Fofo are getting off good resets instead of helping him. So trying to do two things at once in a way of like, hey, keeping tempo in your lanes and being able to move on to the next play while you just have one guy slowly doing whatever objective you want to take. FPX are able to punish that do have a slight gold lead now but i still don't think it amounts in all too much for their side i feel like the biggest thing is that you have nuggery getting pretty strong able to pick up the executioner's calling at this yeah. point and 
Four FPX, I'd like to see them start hovering towards that top side quite soon. Just help Nuggery break down that top turret. You don't need to gank. You don't need to necessarily do anything. Show on top wave, and he's going to have to back off the wave. Nuggery gets to take that. You can start roaming him around the map as in the replay. I mean, there's not too much to see here, right? Lo Yen was overextended. Nuggery finds his way in over the wall with that. Slicing Dice picks up one. The Ruthless Predator comes out. They're able to secure the second one. And it's just the punishment off the tempo that we just talked about. Yeah, and just how it went down there and how FPX have found that lead. Well, bot lane still going a little bit more in favor of LWX here on the Varus. We might see Tien. I thought he might actually opt into that fight. Is a bit of an unknown fight there as you don't have too much vision in the enemy blue side or at least red side down there. Couldn't be. Maybe in some trouble in mid lane as this tower is going to be going down to the Rift Hero spawned up by Lu Yen and the rest of RA. As they will trade it for a bot lane tower though, as it will be fourth, or first tower rather, going over to FPX, but quickly responded to by RA. Yeah, so RA at least going to have one turret back. I feel like the good thing for FPX is they still have the ability to break down top side turret very easily. And then you can make a play where you have Nuggery in the side lane, you have bot lane mid or do and be mid, and like you can look to do the push in both sides collapse on mid play for the last turret for FPX to where RA don't really have any easy answer to picking up either of the side lane turrets that are still left open. But I feel like for RA, the silver lining to that is you don't necessarily have to be thinking of how to break down their, their yeah. outer turrets all too much. You just more have to think about how do I stop FPX from making that next play on the top side of the map. Fofo going for some trading against Tien there in the uh, jungle, in the river there. But the rest of FPX quickly respond to the aggression put forth by Rare Adam. Q might be in some trouble top lane as he gets away as his tower dies and FPX are storming into RA's blue side of the jungle as a five-man squad. There's not much that RA can do about it. Resets will come back out. Nope, with how low the, the turret was for RA, it, it feels like even if he dedicated five-man topside right, Nuggery could have just walked up and even tanked one or two turret shots. You're able to take that one, so the rest of your team's able to walk into your topside jungle. They're going to walk out from that one. Now for FPX, it's about just kind of pushing in both sides, keeping those uh, uh, grooving forward and then moving towards the mid lane. This is already down to half HP. So if you're able to force both Cube and Fofo to show on a side wave, you should be able to guarantee that mid turret. And then you have a, a nice set of gold and you have both quadrants of the jungle open. But Dragon's going to be up in 40 seconds. So before looking to make that play on mid, both teams probably going to start making their way over towards that objective. But both top laners have TP. Can be there in an instant, Mazel. I sure do love my TP plays. And, you know, first to take a leg up in this dragon soul hunt for that ocean dragon soul will be how valued they are or what they do. It's how they're used to pull the enemy teams out yeah. of their base and set up fights. Because to me, that feels like the big value of neutral objectives, at least in the LPL, because, you know, teams typically aren't going to give it up. They typically will come and look to fight it no matter what power spike they're on. Yeah, I think it's it's sometimes a bait, but sometimes it's also just so incredibly important. As we are back into the game, I do want to update. We were just having uh, a reports of some visual issues with Tien, but apparently everything is fixed up and ready to go. And he is starting the bear, or the dragon, the other objective, uh, the left, not the other right. Uh, but it will be the dragon going over to FPX as they take advantage of the moment to get their second dragon of the game. You know, I'm just saying, if he did start up the Baron at 20 minutes, <laughs> would have been a total baller. Would have been the gangster of the you rift. Chad, you know? yeah, exactly. You. <laughs> not not caring about anything, but instead is going to go for that. Uh, looking for the the, the scaling that those are going to provide later on. To where RA, I like what they're doing. They are one of the teams that aren't just going to mindlessly fight the dragon like we were just talking about, right? They're not going to get baited into coming out of their base for that until they really have to. They're just going to keep playing to get more items onto iBoy. Right now, sitting at two, does have the Immortal Shield Bow and the Rune on, so getting close to a decent point of damage. Ophelia is still overall being the one of those AD carries that really feels like he does rely on three items. Ever since the buffs on the recent patches, you have switched to leveling up your lethality second instead of your attack speed. So your mid game does feel, I'd say a little bit better than it did before. Not a huge deal, but 
does still make a difference in some of these mm -hmm. these early skirmishes. And as we're you know taking a, a couple months, I dissect what we're looking at and getting back into the game and everything. I do want to take a look around the map at some of these lane assignments, right? We've seen Fofo against Doombi in the top lane for a majority of these last couple minutes, and we're seeing the floating of the ADCs towards mid lane. I do also want to point out you were talking about the Runans completed there for the Aphelios for iBoy. On the other side of it, you have the Serpent's Fang completed for LWX. A little bit of shield reduction power there with a lot of shielding coming out from you know some members of the side of ra and now fpx are taking the momentum they've gained trying to get this mid lane tower cracked a little bit more but that runan's coming up clutch for eye boy in the wave clear yeah and i mean nice reaction by ra i feel like fpx's last few moves have been very telegraphed just from how the champions play out and like the state of the map right so yeah for ra you you know what epic's gonna be trying to do they're gonna be trying to to get in a position where they can push out sides especially playing around nuggery's lane where he is the one that does have big pressure compared to uh Duinby, who is still gonna get pressured by fofo right now and they're just gonna look to be able to make that numbers advantage play on mid to break that down for ra you don't really have anything you need to do other than up keep your defensive vision which is what they're doing you can see control ward behind their red buff you can see vision on baron right now and then when fpx stops showing on the side waves just reactively move towards mid because it doesn't matter where fpx are other than that if they're in your jungle it doesn't really matter too much as long as they're not showing on the wave you know where yeah. you need to be but didn't matter fpx still <laughs> were able to make the play to get this turret because a reset had to come out from iboy did end up just buying a bf sword yeah, so I, that just perfectly leads back to the point you were saying earlier about like the beauty of the push and pull and you know we were talking more about the dragons and what that does but it's also about the push and pull around the general map state and moments like this where fpx are trying to leverage their lead they just return to the same play right it's just that extra couple seconds of waiting that extra couple couple moments of waiting for that decision to come down and being able to return and get that mid tower keep that pressure up and open up the the map a little bit more for yourself so i like the consistency coming out from FPX the fact that they are continuously trying to push up and push their advantages one thing I really like about FPX we didn't see it in that moment but it's something that I wouldn't be surprised to do some point this game is that when they get in situations like that where right typically your your, your team compositions win conditions don't really necessarily change uh, like as the game goes on you're gonna keep looking for like certain instances of like okay well we need to set up these flanks or we do have pushing lanes that we need to like use to get on objectives first fpx is a team that will like let's say they need to make that that turret play on mid well they'll try and force a pick on sides first to pull the people you have at mid towards yeah. the side lane and catch them out in transition to then make the play on mid so they're a team that i think is very good about forcing you into positions with different kinds of set plays and I think they're one of the few teams that are very good at things like that. So for FPX, plays like that are why they're able to get this small gold lead that they have now and why they might be able to close out a game like this despite being up against things like the Aphelios and iBoy, which does do pretty well against a lot of the champions coming out for FPX. It definitely does. Not if you get caught oh, out, caught though. Out, Chains though. of Corruption came out. Cleanse has already gone, and iBoy is dead. El WX is able to get the kill. The follow-up, Fofo just goes in, almost dies. Has to get immediately out as doing B just goes golden. And FPX are able to strike a kill. Now are in position to take soul point for themselves. Right as we're caught, you know, setting him up to be the man that RA need to lead on. I glance back over to the screen and he's getting absolutely decimated by the members of FPX. And now FPX are going to be on soul point with this one. They're not only going to be able to do this objective, but they're going to be able to keep control of topside vision at the same time they have lwx and doing hovering up towards there right now so gonna be able to do decently well on both sides of the map because we're gonna see the replay iboy walking up to contest midway chains of corruption come out and just really nice combo from shunny going in at the same yeah. time to where he instantly has to flash away oh. or he would go down oh lwx now getting yeah, moves all over the place lyric my goodness Flashes break yep. ankles, people. Flashes break ankles. Yeah, really, really nice coming out from RA. They, you know, they're mad that that iBoy went down. They want to put punishment back down to LWX and look at iBoy's oh. guns. Kushendip Severum up. You know, the the best DPS guns for trying to burn down this Baron. 
and you've still got Nugri across the other side of the map does have tp available doing the now coming in as well fpx are here they feel confident to go in the pit but who's gonna get the baron the quickness engaged the engage is there they have already found it though as Luyen gets the baron but they gotta get out with their lives hung and fofo are in there they are committing to the fight and fpx are scattered nuggery you might be a big old crocodilian but your health bar just ain't enough he'll put up a fight he'll take one with them but he goes down too and ra have found it i gotta be honest with Zell. my eyes were on iboy at the start of that fight I can't believe that RA were able to take out so many members of FPX on the back end of it. Thank God we're getting a replay right away so we can see how this all went down. We do see that Lo Yen's going to be the first one to be able to guarantee that smite onto the Baron. We see a lot of the AoE come out from the members of FPX as well. Dragon's Rage Kick, kicking away the Rakan, making sure he isn't able to get onto Iboy. But then Hung, Cube, and Lo Yen just being able to do so much in the back line. They instantly get onto Tien, take him out of the fight while Hung is zoning off LWX. And we look at those two members, they really are the big damage dealers for the side of FPX. So the fact that they're both taken down so early on puts them in this situation where sure, Nugri's gotten an advantage, but having to deal with four members all by himself is too tall of a task for this, this former world champion. And now you've got RA with the Baron. They've got the gold lead in hand as well, and they might be down soul point to FPX. If they can continue to push up with this Baron buff and get advantages that way, you continue to grow that gold lead. Those fights get easier and easier with the composition you've set out for yourself. And I got to point out, Fofo here, 2-0-3 oh, on the LeBlanc. Feeling himself in these fights, trying to dip in, trying to dip out, but really being the piece that's helping pull apart the strength of FPX. Yeah, uh, to be fair, I do want to give a lot of credit to Le Yen in that fight. I feel like Le Yen set everything up. Fofo, I thought, wouldn't even be able to have the impact that he ended up having because he was just being zoned away by members like Nuggery, but in the end, is able to find his way back in and be the one to pick up these kills. And now sitting on a Rabadon's death cap, he's absolutely yeah. massive. He is, and that just plays into what RA have drafted for themselves, right? They have so many pieces that can just pick out and pick apart FPX's composition, and they're being able to execute on it. And that's the beautiful part about all of it coming together for RA. But on the other side, for FPX, you've given up this fight, you've had good objective control, but you have to be careful and you have to make sure everybody's on the same page, especially LWX. There's been some, some chains of corruptions that have not hit the mark, but that is a crucial setup for FPX, especially in their long range engage. They're about to walk into an engage themselves, though. Tien maybe thinks better of it. Yeah, Q, Agreed. though. They've got quickness there on Shun Yi. Goes in, broke entrance to back it up. Five members here, chains of corruption there. You gotta watch LWX, though, as he's putting in some serious damage. And now you get the resets coming out for Tien as he will have Heartbreaker available, still looking for more resets. Heartbreaker not available anymore, actually. Went ahead and used it. But RA have to get out of here as FPX are surging forward after picking up a couple kills. That one was just a head scratcher. Loigan and Cube, I, you know, I, I, I understand what they were looking for. I just don't know how they, like, they, they envisioned it in their heads of that actually being able to work out with them without them going down when FPX had almost every single member of their team in that quadrant of the jungle, and you guys didn't really have anyone else around. Fofo was nearby, could have jumped in as well, but if Fofo had gone in, he probably would have been someone to go down to, and it just feels like this should be a guaranteed Ocean Soul for FPX. It's gonna be a really nice pickup for FPX as they do burn down this dragon. No contest coming out from Rare Adam, and that'll be objective dominance from FPX, only having given one dragon up in that regard. Fofo just trying to get something on the opposite side here, just clear this wave down, but FPX come out the better for it. They'll retake, or at least even closely get back that gold lead, right? We're just within about five to 700 now in favor of RA. But these fights are neck and neck, and it's all about who is getting picked out first, who is misstepping and overstepping in these fights. 
funnily enough, I feel like the team that is engaging in front to back against the enemy team, like, if you're the team jumping into the enemy team's front line, I feel like you're going to be the team that loses that fight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For, for RA, it's like, I think especially iBoy is going to be someone who's going to be happy if your your Viego and Renekton are jumping in. We've already highlighted that numerous times. Fofo's going to have room where he can uh, get to his side and like even just posture against someone like LWX. And then Logan has the Dragon's Rage kick to keep the, the Rakan away. We even saw that in the Baron exchange. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, RA can't just freely jump into FPX's comp like we just saw in that last exchange. You have a ton of CC. You have a ton of, like very close range uh, lockdown and AOE damage to take out oh, the frontliners of RA. He's caught, he's dead, Fofo gets the kill, and that means the avalanche is coming for the likes of FPX, as everybody else is moving forward as well. You gotta be careful, the AOE is there, LWX has a lot of damage, LWX already has found him again, and FPX are moving, and FPX are getting resets! Fofo can do nothing as Hung goes down, iBoy goes down, and Fofo, looking for the trade, gets the kill back. But he's all alone against an absolutely domineering FPX. And there are 30 second death timers on most members of RA. I don't know if FPX can necessarily look for the end, especially with the strongest member of RA being alive, but FPX at least gonna look for the inhibitor. Try and get as much as they can here. They do have Chains of Corruption available on LWX again if Fofo overextends, but it will just be that inhib picked up. Some super minions coming down mid lane, and the focus to FPX turns on the map. Yep, no objectives up anymore, though. Baron's still up, but no dragons, no other turrets that you can pivot towards, so reset should be what will come out. We're going to see how Shunny initially is picked off walks into the top side jungle. You wouldn't assume that Ari would be here, I think, especially for a rookie when the rest of your team is pushed up so far in mid lane, so goes down to the dredge line coming out. For RA, Lu Yen finds the kick onto Doon B, it looked like, not it was onto a really LWX. Good flash from LWX. Yeah, yeah, LWX getting out of there, and even the Chains of Corruption doing a nice job to lock numerous members down. But still, I feel like RA deciding to then just say, eh, he flashed out, screw it, <laughs> just commit to the, the, the front line. Bit of a weird choice when you do have so many mobile members who do have the ability to lock people down. I think especially Cube saving the Hextech ultimatum. LWX doesn't have any way to flash out or answer a play like that. Then safeguard in with Lu Yen, Fofo able to follow up. And then for iBoy, just keep Cube next to him to at least be the, yeah. the meat shield between him and the, the heavy divers on the side of FPX. Can I just shout out Doombi real quick? Because he's got a Rapidons and a nine stack Dark Seal on the uh, Galio mid lane. Gotta appreciate it. Gotta shout it out because he's doing some serious work there alongside Fofo's LeBlanc. The mid lane showdown is living up to its name here and it's back and forth both ways. FPX have had the last win in the fights, but now RA, they need to maybe turn it around or at least get out of dodge because FPX want to take the fight. Back and forth, Chains of Corruption goes wide yet again, and now RA feel confident as they have five members together, but FPX still moving into mid lane, keeping priority there with their super minions and forcing the hand of RA. They're getting backs off but they've already got so much pressure in the mid lane that this means FPX have their pick of the litter of the map. Yeah, and now for FPX, it's going to be very simple for them to turn towards that Baron. I feel like FPX should just commit at this point. I know they're afraid of the AoE coming out from the side of RA, especially if Cube does find a good ultimate. I feel like RA can take a fight. I feel like we've just seen very very rushed engages coming out from RA in all these situations, but FPX commit, they are going to get the Baron, and it feels like FPX are on on the way to being able to turn this lead into a guaranteed win. Yeah, they've been so good at knowing when to go for objectives, knowing when to get the turnaround. So, Fofo, whoo, a lot of damage on Shuni. He needs to get out of there a little bit quick, and uh, we'll do just that. Fofo's starting to become a menace, but when will it be enough for RA as FPX are looking so good and with 50 seconds on the Elder Dragon to spawn, gotta expect RA are starting to shiver in their boots a little bit. Yeah, and we're at four items pretty much across the board. I feel like the big members to highlight, right? Fofo almost being at full build, and then iBoy being at the four item mark as well. I guess five, right? We're, we're including boots. So 
you have the big carries on the side of RA ready to go, but you, you already highlighted the death cap coming out from Doon B as well. You do have a decent amount of damage on the side of FPX. For FPX, so I feel like we're looking at Tien to find those resets to be able to take the fights like they have been doing so far. So can a Hextech Ultimatum come out from Cube onto LWX or Tien? Can Fofo and Loyen follow that up? And then for FPX, just stay grouped as five. Use that AOE, use that lockdown, set up Tien to succeed. FPX in the pit already. Nobody's starting up the Elder just yet. Fofo's on the back. Actually gets a lot of damage on the Nuggery there. And you still have Eyeboy in the mid lane trying to keep that priority up, realizing that they could just move down as soon as FPX decide to start up the Elder. The push and pull. Who cracks first? Who gives up the advantage? FPX start up the Elder. Elder already getting down to about half health. RA need to make a move. They do not want to give up this Dragon as we're getting to a point where it's gonna be chaos, it's gonna be the engage. You have everybody coming through the rogue entrance from doing B, and now you've already lost Cube. What do you do as RA? As Tien flashing over the wall, looking for Fofo. Fofo, can he get out? The madman does not do it. And Dunby gets the kill. The rest of FPX not having lost a single member will use this Baron buff, will use this lead to push down mid and take this game. They've got the bodies. Can they finish it off? Lyric, what a performance from FPX in this first one <laughs> as Nugri is going to get the kill oh, there to finish boy. it off. The reset's coming on through in FPX. The carousel may turn, but the dubs stay consistent. Game number one goes to FPX. And nice performance from them overall. They punished the way that they punished the members of RA who weren't able to to find those those sequences. I'd say fluidly. We saw in the mid game, right?